At first glance, the splotches of orange and yellow on the ocean surface are a curiosity, a reflection of light, possibly, or floating trash. How victorious is that? But look closer, and you realize that unusual floating thing is actually a floating plant. Individual branches are visible. But it's not until you get close up and underwater that you realize the drifting plant forms a unique habitat, a kind of mobile transport habitat for a great variety of marine life. Fish, large and small, all find shelter around this floating island. Such is the mystery of sargassum. We care about it because it is it supports a lot of different organisms. Um, and there are several species of organisms that are endemic to sargassum, meaning that they are only found in sargassum. They are completely camouflaged, so that if you were to look at the sargassum, you would never notice that they're there. But they add a lot of diversity to the pelagic ocean. And they, the sargassum itself and those organisms serve as habitat for a lot of other juvenile fish species, including many that are commercially and recreationally important. Sargassum is so important to the pelagic or open ocean, it is protected fish habitat. But not much is known about it. Which is why Lindsay Dubbs at the University of North Carolina Coastal Studies Institute is studying this unique ocean drifter. And satellite tracking reveals ocean currents carry sargassum a long way. That the sargassum originates in the Gulf of Mexico and is transported by currents to the Gulf Stream and it is thereby carried to right off the North Carolina coast. Some of the sargassum ends its journey and stays off the North Carolina coast. It's usually found in the spring and then it stays throughout the fall. Some washes ashore, but most of the floating plant continues drifting up the eastern seaboard and then out to the open ocean to what is known as the Sargasso Sea. That's a huge collection of sargassum that stretches for hundreds of miles in the North Atlantic. You know, the currents and the wind working together, as well as the wave action, are kind of aligning it in different ways. Sargassum, by the way, is a brown algae. It is found in every ocean except the Antarctic. The name is derived from a Portuguese word for a type of grape. The men sailing with Christopher Columbus thought the air bladder that keeps sargassum afloat looked like a grape. Sailors and fishermen have talked about sargassum for centuries. In fact, there's a quote in Columbus's diary talking about the sea looking like a giant bed. There was so much sargassum. So why study it now? Well, it has to do with air conditioning and electricity. There is a push for offshore energy production. That would affect fisheries and habitat, and sargassum is very much a habitat. Scientists want to know whether the installation of Gulf Stream energy turbines would affect sargassum communities. There wouldn't be a direct interaction. Turbines are anchored to the sea floor. Sargassum floats on the surface. But the wake generated by the turbines would reach the surface. And that wake could influence especially the nutrient cycling of the sargassum because it would cause more turbidity and mixing. Essentially, cloudy, stirred up water might make it difficult for the sargassum to get the nutrients it needs. So, researchers carefully studied every facet of the sargassum's ocean environment, and they then recreated many ocean environments in the lab. Some of the sargassum was then subjected to a constant wake effect. So far, it appears this unique plant, which floats at the intersection of energy, ecology, and the protection of fisheries habitat and endangered species is more resilient than expected. This amazing complex of bacteria and algae and macroorganisms, larger organisms that you can see with your eye, it's completely fascinating and so it's, it's a interesting and intriguing system that hasn't been studied nearly enough in my opinion.